на їх позицію остеопорозу, з якими познайомилися на кінц-конференції, який проводить разом з нами в Відні постійно кожного року, перед Новим роком, так звані передноворічні конференції, на які приїздять спеціалісти з різних країн Європи, але Україна завжди бере участь в цій конференції. І я надзвичайно радий, що професор Йорч з нами близько. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, професор Поборошнюк. Dear panel, dear colleagues, dear friends, I'm very happy to be back to Ukraine, to be back to Kiev. And this moment reminds me to my last talk I had in, in Lviv two years ago. I came from the airport and I was put <laughs> on the scene. <laughs> and that time I talked about osteoporosis in paintings. So this time I, I want to introduce to you the bone as almost as sensible as the brain to all imbalances in the human being and to all reactions like the brain. And why is it so? Why is it almost as important? If you look on the cells, for example, you see that one of the bone cells looks like a glia cell from the brain, which is in connection to other cells. for a better transfer of information and reactions. And this osteocyte, osteocyte network can be depicted like this. And if you see it like this picture, I don't think that you will think that this is Bone. Probably you will, in your first thought, think this is brain. We have done some work on the osteocytes already a couple of years ago when one of my collaborators was doing tests on bone specimens at the cyclotron, a very high resolution computed uh, tomogra tomography, where she could depict the system of the osteocytes lacunae and the connection to each other in a three-dimensional way. and we introduced this work at the ASBMR seven years ago. We were also able to, to stain the osteocytes. And with the help of this sclerostin in the osteocytes, we could show the shape of the osteocytes. This was done by Janina Patch, Years ago, she, she was joining me in a lot of conferences in the Ukraine. But it's not only 
a brain function of the bone. Bone is also a gland producing hormones, peptides, like a, a very important uh, growth factor like FGF23 or the osteocalcin which is related to pancreas, to muscle, to the adipocytes and to uh, some other systems in the body. And there is a endocrine signaling between the osteocyte and the bone, which is also related to some inflammatory bowel diseases. You will hear from that much more tomorrow. And then, bone has a soul. Don't forget. We know this uh, <coughs> on work of psychoimmunology, where we see that there is an axis between the cortex, the hypothalamus, hypophysis, the adrenal cortex, and finally producing cortisol and affecting the bone. And we know that stress, psychological stress, is inducing uh, reactions uh, similar to inflammation and we know that people with depressions have a very special uh, profiling bone parameters. One of the protagonists of a psychological disease are, is anorexia nervosa or eating disorder. And you can see this the complex background of bone disease in eating disorders uh, not being only dependent on the way of nutrition and on the low amount of fat mass but also on the function of other Plans and also the axis of the adrenal system. There is inflammation and there is uh, immunology also affecting bone and vice versa. Bone is also affecting um, immunologic pathways and this is what you I'm sure you have heard about this this afternoon the role of TNF IL-1 IL-6 in inducing processes via the rank ligand on the osteoclast side on the bone resorption side and via DICOP1 and sclerostin on the osteoblast side. Furthermore, in psoriasis, there are also other interleukins. Uh, we have found out that they do not have only relation to inflammation, but also on processes inducing erosions on bone and degradation of cartilage. So this is 
the bone as a mirror, as a mirror of almost all diseases in the human system which are affecting more or less the bone. What are the diagnostic tools? Let me introduce once more the diagnostic tools we have in Vienna and we are very happy about that. These are all possible um, biochemical parameters and in the latest development also uh, is it the Tikhoff and Kloto we can determine in the serum. It's also analysis of bone architecture, analysis of uh, finite uh, element uh, definition of the TBS, and as the very latent development, it's the nano CT with a, a very, very, very high resolution of 7 micrometers. You compare it with the standard peripheral QCT of 82 micrometers, so we, we are much more deeper in the, in the bone structure. More than 22 years ago we started research on different uh, diseases and their affection uh, and the influence on the bone and this was a group of girls with eating disorders like anorexia or, or bulimia and, and we saw with this from today's view simple methods we saw that uh, girls with anorexia had a significant uh, lower bone mineral density than uh, girls with uh, bulimia at all measuring sites and also with the uh, ultrasound equipment. We tested this on 85 uh, patients. In a further development, years later, we did per peripheral high resolution QCT on a, a group of, of young people uh, age 44 with eating disorders and we could show that there are markedly different structures at the bone cortex when we compare the structure to healthy controls and you can see here a very significant cortical porosity and this is still work in, in, in process to be published. We also measured gerostin and bone turnover markers and we could see that those females with eating disorders have a high bone turnover in their blood analysis. So why we think that this dysfunction of the hypothalamus leads to reduced muscle mass, elevated cortisol, diminished estrogen, and a whole chain of reactions which predispose to osteoporosis. Let's go to the other end of the scale. Since bariatric medicine is now uh, very fashionable almost over the world. And let me let me show you on an example. A lady before with a BMI of almost 42 before the operation. This is the the whole body composition and a year later and look at the difference. We have done a closer look on those patients and we have seen that there is happening a lot in bone metabolism after bariatric surgery. And it looks like that the first six to eight months are the sensible phase after the operation where you see that <coughs> gerostin is going up, the cop one is going down, and the 
bond resorption, bond formation markers, so bond turnover is going up during the first 8 to 12 months, then leveling off on a certain level. At the same time, the whole body composition, as we expect, and as I showed to you, is going down over the observation period of 24 months. Looking on interventions, and we had a diet group with a specific diet, the so-called intervention group and the non-intervention group, not supplying them with special protein and rich food. And you can see also differences in the pattern of the different parameters we measured. We did also TBS exams on those patients and we could also see that uh, intervention with the right diet is very important in those patients. Let's switch to diabetes. And this is what we know and this is, is, that is a work done by Janina Hatsch. Look at the base. You see the bone mineral density in different groups. Diabetes with fractures, fractures without diabetes, diabetes without fractures. You can see differences, but all the values are above the minus 2.5, above the fracture threshold. Uh, as a consequence, <coughs> uh, high-resolution high uh, QCT was measured and uh, we could at, at least explain in part <coughs> the fragile bone in diabetics cause of the pronounced cortical porosity which cannot be detected by a simple bone mineral density measurement, to being one of the, of the main problems why patients with diabetes fracture as a relative, with a relatively high bone mineral density. And I think there are, there are two main reasons And again, it's the osteocyte who is in the central road. The cortical porosity. And the accumulation of those advanced glycolization um, elements or agents, which are sugar molecules hanging in the hydroxyapatite structure of the bone. We have extended our research on gastrointestinal diseases. And this is a recent work published this year by my group. Showing again, if we look on different stages of liver disease, cirrhosis, uh, alcohol steatosis hepatis and non-alcohol steatosis hepatis we see in this was these were the groups um, we see in patients without fractures but with severe liver disease already changes in the structure of the trabecula, but also in the cortex region, predisposing to fractures in those patients. And if you look on, on certain parameters, on certain uh, architectural parameters, we can see that there are statistic, statistical differences to the different subgroups. We 
we also extended our research on bone to patients with uh, different inflammatory bowel diseases and found differences in between the different inflammatory bowel diseases but you are going to hear more about that tomorrow by Judith Hashka and I do not want to, to give you extended information on that. Please come back tomorrow. Uh, Roland Kotzian, who, who unfortunately could not come with us this afternoon, did also measurements on microarchitecture in psoriasis arthritis and again he could, he could, uh, he could find very interesting features and patterns of changes of microstructures in the joints affected by psoriasis. I've looked at the program and I couldn't see any, any, any speech on steroid osteoporosis, so I thought some slides to make you aware, to make you aware how often steroids are used in the world. And you can see that, that almost 6% of all adults are receiving steroids due to any reason. rheumatoid arthritis, it's, uh, it's lung diseases, it's bowel diseases, the, 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 the most important indications for the start of a steroid medication. And what we see is that up to 50% of the patients under steroid medication suffer from a fracture, suffer from a hip fracture, but also from a vertical fracture. Because the glucocorticoids have two main effects on bone. A direct effect on the bone cells, like on osteocytes, increased apoptosis, Osteoclasts, decreased apoptosis. Osteoclast, decreased ap apoptosis, leading to increased fracture risk. So there is low bone formation and there is high bone resorption. And then there is a systemic effect also of the steroids. <clears throat> it's on the calcium metabolism. They make a negative calcium balance. And on the muscle system, ending up in myopathy and the risk, increased risk of falls. If you measure patients under steroid medication frequently during the first year or the first two years, then you can, you, you can see a, a rapid phase within the first months with more than 10% loss of bone during the first six to eight months. Probably due to osteoblast suppression and at the same time synchronous increased bone resorption. Followed by a slow phase with the remaining suppression, suppression of bone formation. But uh, fortunately we have we have evidence of effective pharmacotherapy. And this is, you see, alendronate, resendronate, all the well known uh, medications are effective in reducing the fracture risk and increasing bone mineral density. This is 
is just uh, a summary of the most important randomized trials. All somehow similar effective in those patients. So and let me just introduce you. We'll go and also to here. Please come back tomorrow. We, we will we will talk about the microRNAs. This is our last and most recent uh, uh, work. Uh, probably you know that microRNAs are, are uh, non-coding RNAs, short ones, being uh, very important regulators for gene expression. And you can measure them in blood, but also in tissue. And this is what we did and published last year. Again, with a very high, high resolution technique of bone biopsies. And measuring tissue concentration of certain uh, microRNAs. And, and we think out of almost 190 different microRNAs at, at the moment we, ident we identified the signature of three microRNAs uh, RNAs, which, have, which have high correlation to cortical porosity as well as uh, changes in microstructure on bone. So this is very promising research and uh, we still don't know where we will end up with this technology. So let me introduce in, 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 the, in the very last part of my talk the institutions uh, where we do our research. It's the St. Vincent Hospital, it's a new university in Vienna, the Sigmund Freud uh, University and the medical school there. And the Center of Musculoskeletal Diseases, uh, where some of you have already been. And this is, this is my team and I, I cannot finish to thank all my collaborators doing this very important work. Just a couple of images. This is the new uh, medical school in Vienna. At the moment, 2,000 students in the medical school where we teach them. And it's a very modern and, and very tasteful uh, inner environment in this building. And with these impressions, I I end my talk and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Proceeding. Good luck as a good time. Please. Please. Questions? Questions. Good luck. Sir. Thank you very much for your beautiful uh, presentation. Uh, one hour later, I made a presentation about uh, elderly onset rheumatoid arthritis. And my question is, if the patient uh, have a uh, woman, uh, maybe 64, uh, have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and we make uh, DEXA, and so she had a cyanosis. Uh, how we may understand what is the uh, main? This is postmenopausal osteoporosis, uh, maybe secondary osteoporosis, and uh, she may uh, take a treatment by lethal uh, dose of glucocorticoid. How we must write in uh, history of. So I, I think 
since we have uh, a specific osteoporosis medication affecting the bone, regardless the reason of the weak bone, the treatment will be the same. We will not choose another medication because it's just postmenopausal osteoporosis or because it's uh, secondary osteoporosis by, by steroids. And when you look on the, on the few studies on uh, inflammatory induced osteoporosis and different kinds of medications like immune modulation or, or biologicals or methotrexate plus cortisone those studies do not distinguish whether there is cortisone included in the therapy management or not. The groups are too small. So I, I don't think that the reason of the osteoporosis will, will, will give us another direction of, of the treatment. Uh, how we may understand this is uh, complicated of uh, rheumatoid arthritis and hypocarticulitis? Uh, or uh, this is the postmenopausal? Uh, this is comorbidity? Uh, usually, the bone turnover markers are, are much higher in those acute induced uh, osteoporosis changes in the bone than by postmenopausal, which takes over years. I think maybe out of the but there is no evidence. You cannot distinguish with the level of bone turnover markers the origin of, of, of the osteoporosis.